you buy that? Yes. Sorry guys, just trying to get this set up. Like Joey said, the difficulty of uh, of ingenuity. Bishop. I'm a paranormal investigator of 10 years. Can't see you. Can't see you. Oh, wait a minute. It's lagging. Can you see me now? My name is Paul. I'm a paranormal investigator of 10 years. Move the box a little if you need to. Okay. You can see me? I can see you now. I'm just lagging. You need to make sure that we're both visible. See? Yeah. Yeah. Mine's lagging bad. Okay. Alright, so once again, sorry about that. We're just trying to get the camera and everything in right in the camera angle. My name is Paul Isaiah Bishop. I'm with Death Bat Paranormal. I am a lead investigator. I'm Joey Arada. I'm one of the lead investigators in Cameraman. And we have Mindy Jackson here with us. Uh, she is our uh, audio tech, and she is also our editor slash director. Um, and we have gotten so much fucking activity, guys, in our little bit amount of time of being in here. Uh, <coughs> Figured that we'd go ahead and go live and tell you guys a little bit about the interesting phenomena that we've ran into. Uh, we had gotten this hotel a little while ago, and we went to pick up our uh, cameraman, Joey Ayola, and brought him back with us immediately. And um, off the get-go, when we came in the room, we sat down and ate some Chinese food, and boom, activity. Uh, I had a female uh, apparition... Uh, we've been smelling perfume in here, like old woman perfume. And we actually got some uh, apparition footage uh, of this woman figure uh, coming up and grabbing me. I had been grabbed by the spirit. Uh, and Joey and Mindy had kind of caught it on camera, told me not to move. This thing was moving towels in the bathroom. It was walking around and everything else. Have a feeling that it could be a... Uh, a prostitute from the early 1900s. Uh, this area that we're in right now is part of the area that burnt down in the 1960s. Uh, believe that I do. I do know the Hilltop Inn was in a movie. I don't know what the movie was, Joey. Um, I think it was May Come Running. It's with uh, Frank. Sinatra. It's with Frank Sinatra and some mafia mafia boss. Oh. They all come running is what the movie's called. Mm -hmm. But uh, we got footage from immediately. Uh, I immediately, whenever Joey Aola told me that, he also heard some stuff moving around too. Immediately we grabbed the cameras and got to work. And uh, we got the EVP recorder and everything else up and going and ready. I was on the phone calling a good friend of mine, uh, Ruby Schultz Mills, because Ruby had gotten some... Uh, we went down, me and Joe Ale went downstairs and we kind of looked around and I was showing him around and I took some pictures of the bottom balcony and uh, Ruby Schultz had pointed out to us and circled it on a picture. There was an apparition just sitting there that we did not capture. Uh, that's why it's important for you viewers to kind of watch out uh, to basically see what we're dealing with here because we, you guys may catch things we don't. 
but we do promise the activity is there and it is happening. Definitely. Uh, we, me and Joey Yola have been sitting here trying to come up with philosophies of what can happen. Um, the problem is, is you can say what is all day long, but there was nothing but men in the 1960s in this area. Men to be exact. Huh? 33 men. There were 33 men on this side whenever this place burnt down. And um, when you have men, there's normally women. Uh, we have a feeling the men in the early 1900s would have brought prostitutes back with them. Uh-huh. And uh, that could definitely lead to a lot of other things. Um, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and switch this camera around. I apologize, guys. Rotate your device. Okay, I guess we'll do it like this. Hey. I don't know why I didn't do like that to begin with. I don't know. Oh, well, yeah. That's a lot better, and we can also see the guys' comments. Yeah. You guys are all the time. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, guys, to continue on to what we were talking about, there were, you said 33 men, exactly, 33. 33 men that were in this building when it had burnt to the ground uh, in uh, 1960s, right? Uh, yes. We have pictures and stuff like that of the original people in the 1870s that were on this land. Um, they had did it. Now, there's been a dark cloud hanging over Madison, Indiana for a lot of years. There were... People that had jumped to their death from the balconies. We've heard that there were suicides, but when me and Joey sit here and talk about it, when the place burnt down, it only makes sense. Because when, when, you're, when your building's on fire, the only way to be able to navigate, to move around, is by simply fucking jumping. Exactly. To your death. Yes. And when you guys stand at the bottom of the hilltop in and look up, it doesn't look like too far of a way down. But I promise you, it's two, three stories. Yes. And when you hit, you're hitting flat concrete, and your body's rolling down a hill. Definitely. Which is what me and Joey have named it Death Hill. Uh, and um, we're calling this the Hilltop Inn. Yes. Because, I mean, this place is crawling with evidence. Yes. Uh, we put sage, uh, the vent in the room, we figure it, it's, it's an early 1900s invention, but it sucks in the air rather than pushing it out. Exactly. It's an older system. Yeah. Uh, we don't really know much about uh, the systems as much, but we do know that it is a direct portal throughout all of the facility. And it only makes sense to me and that... I was thinking about that. Uh, it, it, it only makes sense to me that these hallways in here, this place was burnt down and remodeled, right? There's still some original parts to this place. Now that you mentioned the whole uh, vent, vent, I just I just thought of something. What? All right. So if this place was burning down, my theory is, would it if they had that kind of same system back in the 1800s? Wouldn't you think that all everybody would be smelling the same thing at the same time and start running out the house? Absolutely. Oh. Unless you're knocked out of sleep or unconscious in bed. Exactly. But if you wake up and your house and the hotel is on fire, mm-hmm. there is no way to run out the doors. One of the options is the window. You have to go out the window or jump off the balcony. Mm-hmm. That would be your only way of survival. Mm-hmm. I can only imagine people at that time mm-hmm. taking sheets and luring it out the window, trying to escape. Breaking the like mischief of uh, bread or... But, Oops, if, whatever, yeah. but if you did not have time, you were forced to jump to your death. You have to jump. If you don't jump, you're going to burn to death. It's just like the World Trade Centers, guys. Uh-huh. Uh, back uh, in 2001, when they were hit by the plane, yes. those people were being burned alive. Uh-huh. They had no choice but to jump. There was no getting down a staircase. There was no making a big rope. There was no doing anything in those World Trade Centers. The only option you had was to jump. Same thing here. Here's another thought that I have. After researching it and maybe looking it up, she never knew that mentioned of any fire department showing up. Yeah, I noticed that too. No fire department showed up, nothing. We have a feeling, guys, 
that this place was set on fire by an arsonist. Somebody tried burning this place down. Either for insurance money. Insurance or money. Or greed. Or somebody saw something that they didn't want to see. So they said no witnesses. Absolutely. I mean, we could be sitting on top of... I mean, you know, you could have easily... Being rich back then, you could have at least... You could have hired... Like Frank Sinatra, guys, come on. The mafia boss. Big name people like that. You could have easily hired somebody to kill somebody and hide their body here. Yeah. And nobody would ever know because it's on top of a fucking hill out in the middle of Madison, Indiana. Exactly. Body, we could be on top of a fucking cemetery. Mm -hmm. Somebody's remains could be here. Exactly. We don't know. But what we do know is that there has been a lot of death here. And uh, we have already gotten activity in a little bit amount of time being in here. Major activity. Um, I have been touched. I have had whatever it is, it is, it's attracted to me. Uh, I do have a fedora on. I know they wore fedoras back in that time period. And like I, like I showed you earlier on the video that I recorded, all three of us heard a sigh. We don't know if it was a sigh of relief or a sigh of, you know, he needs to stop talking or a sigh of like, you know, I don't want him here anymore. I had a female apparition that had came into the room. When I first came into the room with Mindy before we had went and got Joey Aola, I had noticed that there was a perfume smell in this room of an old woman. The perfume smell kind of left uh, as we were in here, the longer we were in here. But when we went to get Joey Aola and we came back, we didn't smell it again until uh, we started using EVPs and got done eating. We put our Chinese up eventually and we noticed that automatically. Boom. Actually, it happened as soon as we took the alcohol out. Yeah, we took the alcohol out, me and Joey, we, we had these fancy 1900 glasses here, and we sat down to, uh... Get ready to have a drink. To get ready to have a drink, and all of a sudden the activities and kind of dispersed. That's when you, that's when you said you were feeling lightheaded. I was feeling lightheaded, I was starting to have funny smells, um, and my friend, uh, shout out to you, Ruby, uh, Ruby Schultz, uh, Mills, because you definitely helped us out a lot. Ruby had basically kind of <coughs> let us know that not all spirits, uh, you know, uh, in everybody can smell the scent of a female. Exactly. But if, if that female spirit wants to present itself to me, uh, it, it would target me because I'm a male. And we have a feeling that those 33 men that were up here that could have died brought prostitutes in here with them. Prostitution was a big thing in the Prohibition era. And, uh, you know, guys, I, I don't buy for one minute that those 33 men did not bring prostitutes back with them on a buggy or something. Well, I don't know that they did or they did, but my thinking and my state of mind is that if they did bring a prostitute, what would you think that the prostitute ain't drunk and they can pass out and they left the room? Could have. Because like I said, when the fire started, you can smell it through these vents. Unless you were passed out. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And the way it was talking this way, it would be ventilating this way, and you can't not smell it. Mandy Jackson, would you mind bringing me the laptop so that we can read the history of the world one of these people? Guys, what I'm about to do right now is I'm about to read you a history on uh, the Hilltop oh. Inn. I'm going to read you what the history blogs and everything says. We finally get it connected to the internet. Yay. <laughs> Thank you, sweetheart. Okay. Thank you. Okay, guys. So I'm gonna go ahead and start reading the 401 to you guys. This is on the blog of the history of the place we're in right now. Um. Goddamn. Here it goes, Joe. You ready for it? I'm listening. This thing come on. Actually, it does. It was We're going to get more light over here for you guys so it you can see us. Oh, there there we go. Go. You guys see us better now? Yay! Hey! Right. Hey! How's it going, guys? All right. Hey, Ruby. Hey, everyone. Uh, you can actually see us now. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and read to you guys the history, and I'm also going to read to you about the history of the fire. Uh, this is factual. It's on a blog. You can look it up. It's in the roundabouts.bz inside pages. It's archived articles. Uh, this is the hillside inn cover.html. 
And if you type that in, you will find this website. Uh, and this is all factual accounts, so this is made up or not. Uh, this is real. <clears throat> so, the it's spelled L-U-C-H-T. Can you pronounce that? Luched. Luched family. Luched family. Okay. Sounds like a, a ma family. Yeah. It's kind of a mafia name if you think about it. Yeah. That's like, what the Luched. Yeah. Luched is kind of Italian. That, that's, yeah. that's a mafia name. Um, so, the editor uh, of this article is Don Ward, and this is Hillside Inn Fire Remembered. This is the Luch family members, area residents, recall 1964 fire. The early morning December blaze destroyed the original Hillside Inn. Madison, Indiana, uh, January 2018, uh... It was, uh, this one, this article was written. It says, December morning in 1964, when the call came into the Madison, Indiana Volunteer Fire Department uh, that the Hillside Inn, then known as the Hillside Hotel, was on fire. John David Luch, whose parents, uh, John and Lydia Luch, owned and operated the hotel, said he was awakened around 4 a.m. by his then wife, Shirley, who told him to get up because she thought the hotel was on fire. The couple lived just below the hotel at 906 Second Street, huh. and Luch managed a hotel bar and lounge for his parents. Me and Mindy were told earlier that there used to be a restaurant down there that also got burnt down. I believe that that right now is what's called the Victoria Inn. That Victoria Inn over there? Yes. It could be connected. Yes. I, I, that, it, 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 it did catch my attention at the Victoria Inn. Um, no we, doubt about that. You did say it's just beneath this hotel. Yes. That's what's beneath. Absolutely. So at first, uh, this is this is what uh, Luke had managed the hotel and bar and his, his parents. Uh, this is what he said. He said at first, uh, or I should say, his wife said. Uh, at first, I thought it was just a uh, brush fire on the hillside behind the hotel, because that had happened before. But when Luch got up and looked out the window, he saw a big red glow in the sky above their house. He knew at that moment it was it was the hotel that was on fire. Scrolling down. Hillside Inn Timeline. 1925, built by Dr. George Denny. 1934, sold to John and Lydia Luch. 1981, Luch is sold to Bill and Jean Harned. 1989, Harned sold to Tom and Patricia Thomason. 1999, hotel auction at bankruptcy. <coughs> Jerry, Jerry Fuzz of French Lake, Indiana is highest bidder. 2005, after extensive remodeling, the Fuzz sells to Gary Zaveri of Knoxville, Tennessee. So it was, um, wow. So it was 6 a.m. on Tuesday morning, December 15th, and the temperature outside was below freezing. The couple made arrangements for a friend to watch their children and then headed up the hill to the fire, which was well on its way to completely destroying the majestic building that sat high above the city at the far east end of Main Street. The Hillside Inn had long been an iconic uh, fixture in Madison, and many townspeople enjoyed visiting the hotel, restaurant, and lounge, which was housed in a rotunda-type glass-in room with a sweeping view of the city, which me and Joey, I saw an apparition in that dark place they're talking about downstairs. I was telling Joey about it a little while ago. Well, here, here's something I gotta say. After you just read that, and, they, and you said the witch was up, walking up there to go to the fire. Why hadn't the fire department been there by then? I have no clue, man. But, um, what really gets me is mm -hmm. how this kind of played out. Okay. And they're trying to play it off like, like it's just casual fire. Yeah, but something always happens. Yes. Um, like, like a chain of events? Yeah. As soon as dozens of volunteer firemen from Madison <coughs> Six Companies, plus Hanover and the Jefferson uh, Proving Ground, were on their way, Fair Play number one volunteer firefighters Joe uh, Noble and Robert Cobb and Bill uh, Gobble were the first uh, three to arrive on the scene. Uh, Noble recalled uh, they set up the truck in the bottom of the hill and started pumping water from down below. 
it was uh, if, if Joey, if you go outside, there is a fire hydrant just randomly yes. set there. I've never seen that. Yes. They set up the truck at the bottom of the hill and started pumping water from down below. It was so <coughs> cold that some of the water pumps froze, and water running down the hill on both sides of the hotel froze, making the fire fight even more difficult. Noble said uh, the fire uh, companies did not have the kind of equipment that is available today, so they were very much at a disadvantage in fighting with a large fire. We only had six helmets and six fire coats, no boots or pants or accessories, said Noble. Uh, and he's 80 years old now, or he was in 2018. So the first six guys who arrived got the helmets and coats. The rest just wore whatever. Wow. Something's moving back here. Something just moved right by, right by me. Again, did you, did you hear that? I heard something. Something was, was just, just stood right here in the doorway. It, like, like it was leaning on the door. Listen. I feel... And now I feel like a ghostly energy just come over me. Man, do you got your phone? See if you catch that anomaly behind me. There's something behind me moving. This is happening again. This is the second time. No, no, no. Now that you're reading the history of it. Now I'm reading the history. Shit's starting to happen. Whew. Okay. Noble said he... He and John Thacker and Cobb climbed onto the roof of the restaurant to try and put some water on the fire. Okay. Noble said he heard Thacker say to Cobb that he saw the big hillside in sign on top of the building starting to lean. I said to him, no, that sign's about to cave in. So we quickly got off the roof, and sure enough, the sign fell through the roof a little bit later. Noble, who joined... Who joined the fire company in the 1960s? Today is the fourth longest member at Fair Play Number One. So he's been he's seen a lot of fires over the years. That was the first major fire since I joined the firehouse, and by that I mean major. It was also one of the hottest fires I've ever seen. His brother John Noble, 80, of uh, Madison, is the third oldest active registered volunteer firefighter <coughs> at the Fair Play Number One. Volunteer firefighter at Fair Play Number One Firehouse. He was 27 when he joined his fellow firefighters to battle the blaze at the Hillside Inn early that cold Tuesday morning. It was pretty well. I keep thinking mm. something's going on the TV. Mm. I'm, I'm just paranoid. Mm. I think I'm paranoid, or something. Something's really going to fuck with us right now. Um. It was pretty well going uh, by the time we got up there. It was a wooden uh, suckle building, so it went up pretty quickly. Uh, John Noble remembered it was cold, 17 degrees, according to reports. He said, when we got there, the hotel guests were standing outside watching it. There were a couple of marine recruiters staying there, and they were wearing only pants and a T-shirt. They lost everything else. Hotel guests were crawling out the windows. When firemen arrived, according to the Madison uh, Courier, Story published later that day. The report said firemen used ladders to help get, uh, hotel guests escape from the third floor, many of whom were screaming for help. Wow. All 33 guests were men that night, with no women, no children present, is what it said. John and Lydia Luch lived in the house located about 75 yards from the hotel, and they had let some of the hotel guests inside to get warm. Uh, Noble uh, recalled, meantime, the number one firefighters fought the fire from the east side, pumping water up from the Park Avenue. Noble said the number one uh, fours had a fire truck up there, uh, but the transmission went out, so it was useless. Uh, the number threes uh, fought the fire from just below the hotel, near Fire A to Zelon, and the garden shop is today. Noble couldn't recall where the firefighters from number two and number five firehouses were stationed, but they were there. We worked, uh, it says that we worked our way into the front room where the restaurant had been located, but when the roof started to collapse and the sign started to come down, we had to get out, he said. The sign blew down and it was completely destroyed. Uh, I actually have a picture here of, of the, the building burned down. Um, it burned all the way down to the first floor and even into the basement. We did the best we could. John Noble said the firefighters worked all day to put out the flames 
and made 14 to 16 more trips up there over the following two weeks to put out hot spots that continue to smolder. Noble ranks the size of that firefight up there with Madison's two other large fires in modern history. The Elks Club building fire of August 2006 in the Jefferson County Courthouse, which burned in May of 2009. Uh, it was one of the finer hotels in town at the time, so it had quite an impact on the community, Noble said, and it took quite a while for them to rebuild it. It's a shame it had to happen. If the hotel had been equipped with the kind of sprinkler systems we have today, it might have been saved. John David Luce recalled going into the restaurant with fireman Charlie Hill to re uh, retrieve the cash register. There was smoke everywhere. We got the cash register out there and most of the unopened bottles of alcohol. But later the ATC, Alcohol and Tobacco Commission guys, made us dump it all out because it wasn't any good. That was about $2,000 worth of alcohol. Area residents recall fire. Susan DeMarie uh, Buchan of uh, Madison was only 12 years old at the time, living on top of the hilltop on uh, oh. State Street. She recalled that a glow from the fire could be seen from her house. Her father, Lester DeMarie, fought the fire as a member of Number 5 Firehouse located on top of Allen Street. That there was a huge glow in the sky that you could see from the hilltop. You can't say she's a retired businesswoman with her late husband, Roger. Uh, she remembered her father saying how bad the fire was after work. She said, Dad said it was the worst fire he had ever seen, and he was a firefighter for number five all his life. Jamie Buchanan, 72, recalled how her father, Bob Hines, was good at making the best of a bad situation. She remembers her dad helping himself to a bottle of wild turkey, carrying it in his car hard jacket, and then sliding down a hillside in his driveway on his rear because he couldn't stand up on the ice covered driveway while fighting the fire. You had to know my dad. He was very funny. I was 19 at the time, living with my parents and working as a hairdresser at Task Beauty Shop in the Cliffy Drive Shopping Center. He said that as fast as they pumped the water on the fire, the water froze because of the extreme cold temperatures they were fighting in an endless battle. It was a dangerous situation. There was a lot... It was a dangerous... It was a dangerous situation, and there was the loss of life, as I remember it. My memories are lighthearted because they were memories of my dad. My dad died in 1974. The fire was a terrible tragedy. On that end of town, said Preacher 66, he went to school that day, and everyone was talking about it. It inspired me to join the number six fire department located on Cliffy Drive next to the school when I was 21. Pritchard joined uh, the company in 1978 and just recently retired, going into senior status. Pritchard said everyone was interested in how the fire started and about the man who died in the fire. <coughs> we were told it was a salesman from out of town. Indeed, the fire claimed the life of chemical salesman Richard Brown, 45 of Lutherville, Maryland. He was staying in room 205 on the second floor. His, bo his, his body and the furniture from his room were found later that morning on the floor below his room in a pile of steaming debris, according to the Madison Courier story that day. The Red Cross Canteen Unit treated several people at that scene. Nine people were taken to King's Daughters Hospital, and five were treated with injuries that were not considered serious. Two days later, the Indiana State Fire Marshal determined that the fire started in Brown's room. Uh, some suspected the fire was caused from a cigarette, but Brown's friends claimed it did not smoke. He did not smoke. Uh, so basically, guys, the fire was a fucking mystery. Um, John David Luch said he heard rumors uh, years later that Brown was a chain smoker and that Brown uh, and a friend were smoking cigars in the room that night. He, he said, I can't prove it. it just was, uh, that just was hearsay that I heard a few years later. But during the insurance case, they claimed he didn't smoke. I'm not sure that he caused the fire. My father died wondering what happened. So no one really knows to this day for sure what caused the fire that caused an estimated $350,000 in damage. What's even worse, the Luches 
uh, had just completed a $150,000 renovation at the hotel during the preceding 14 months before the fire. So this is what ended up happening. All of the family built 1925 by Dr. George Denny. The Hillside Inn was one of the first uh, stucco buildings built in Madison. According to the Madison Courier Report, it's a very historic site. John and Lydia Luce managed the hotel. Um, managed the hotel until 1981, and they sold it to Bill and Jean Harn. During that time, Denny had died, and at the time of the fire, his widow, Roberta, owned and managed Denny Hotel, now the Victoria Inn. Take note. Take note, everybody, what I just said. Victoria Inn, me and my girlfriend was just looking at that. And you mentioned that. It's connected to here. You yeah. just said it. it's connected to here. And when you, not, not, not even two minutes ago, you were reading and it said investigation. And the, uh, what was the word I'm looking for? The uh, insurance claim. Yeah, the insurance claim. So basically, guys, um, what I'm taking from this, nobody truly knows how this place burnt down. It just fucking happened. Man. This place just fucking went up in smoke. And it was at room 205. The man's carcass was found dead mm -hmm. in his room. Mm -hmm. But I've heard rumors over the years, too, as well. There's been a lot of suicides here. There been people jumping off the balconies. I don't see the history of that here, but I'm going to keep digging. I'm not going to quit until I find... I'm going to get the rumors for you to make sure they're real. There's too much hearsay, too many motherfuckers saying this and saying that. I want the truth. You people deserve the truth. We will get you the truth. This is what makes too, us best at what we do. Too much suspicious saying this and saying that insurance claim here. And all of a sudden, at the end... The Victoria Inn magically is not part of this. Yeah, the Victoria Inn is kind of right next to it. It's it's actually not even many. How many yards do you think it's away? Not even maybe fifty yards away, at least. It's not even a football field away from here. Not even. And it's standing there. Uh, the thing that I don't get is my thing is going to get why had why didn't that get affected by the fire? If it was so bad, one of the worst fires ever. Why didn't that get affected? I don't know. We're setting up on a fucking hill and anything could happen. But so many people were jumping out the windows. It even said in the article people were jumping out the windows. Mm -hmm. It was slippery ice. You were on a hill. That's another thing you mentioned. That they could hardly even get water out because they froze. Yeah, the water would freeze. It was 17 degrees the day the fire happened. So whenever they would, whenever they would spray this place with fucking, uh, uh, with, with, with fucking water and shit like that, I mean, it would just automatically freeze. But the people's, the fucking building was on fire. They were going to die. The only option to do was jump out the fucking window. You broke the window, you know? There were a lot of people that also owned this place. There is still a dark cloud hanging over this place. My question is, why did so many people own this place but not? You know? So many owners. So many times it's been passed down. So much jealousy. You know what it takes to run a business, people? I mean, fuck. I mean, this place was... Was driving and living off Frank Sinatra movies. I and mean, that, that right there is what gave me though. When the original order had this place, okay, and it was a gold mine. Because you get people like Frank Sinatra, all the movie stars that came over here, Marilyn Monroe, Marilyn Monroe, all the people coming here to film that movie. And then, all that, after that, all that happened, magically, magically, the good. Poof! Up in smoke. Yes. Just like that. $350,000 worth of damage. And the, whatever that family had just put how much money into it? They had put <coughs> over like 150000 That's just in renovations uh, and, and, and uh, reconstruction. My guess, and I'm just throwing this on the air, I'm not saying that they were involved, but if they just recently put $150,000 worth of profit into this hotel and then it just magically got three hundred and fifty thousand dollars worth of damage. I think the insurance claim 
was triple that to get money, their money back. Absolutely. I can agree that there is something off about that. I have a feeling that it is possible this place could have been burned down by a greedy businessman. It could have been set up. Mm-hmm. This place this was... Point, he, he, he didn't care who was in this place. Let me tell you something, America. Places don't just go poof. Mm-hmm. Something has to happen. Mm-hmm. Now, keep in mind, it could be faulty wiring. It could be something like that. Well, like you said, somebody who was supposedly chain-smoking was smoking cigars. Yes. This place, specifically was an iconic American hotel. This place was used by celebrities. It was fucking high in, in, in demand. And when you say they burned down, it, the town suffered. Exactly. This place really hit the economy here in Madison, and it just fucked everything up. I'm thinking that, I'm thinking that the original hotel brought so much money into the Madison, that when it burned down, it hurt so much financially. But these people were here for so many years and they watched it go through everything, got it built back up and and restored. (coughs) I have a feeling, (coughs) a feeling that Dr. George Denny, uh, that his spirit's still lingering here. Yes. So is his wife's. They came to work here every day. Didn't you say that there was a firefighter who passed away too? I, he did pass away, but he, 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 he spent his whole life wondering what happened here. So that could drive. I, I might be thinking that maybe since he wandered, he could come back and forth. His spirit might be wandering here trying to figure out what's going on. Very possible. Uh, like I said, um, I, I, I fully don't know. There is a dark cloud that hangs over this place. You walk in the hallways, you feel watched. Yes. There is. That's shit, right. That one watches you. There's so much we, death. When we first came up here, I felt like somebody was watching me. There is so much death running through these rooms, running through these hallways. So much fucking death, guys, and it's very agile. I mean, this history here is great and all, but the presence that we've been sensing is not a male by any means. Um, well, remember what I said earlier. Could back, be a cross Back in the day, you know, men dressed as women. Yep. You know what I mean? I'm not saying that that's what happened, but if it was a cross Maybe that person who was the cross-dresser was in, in witness protection and saw something that he wasn't supposed to see. A lot of theories. So we're going to have more history here, guys. There's so much life to this place, guys. Mm-hmm. So what I'm going to type in here mm-hmm. is I want to read some of the forums. If, if I can and I may, I want to pull up um, some of the encounters. What I'm about to read to you guys is I'm about to read to you uh, basically some of the paranormal articles and blogs that people have stayed in this hotel and reported paranormal events happening. And I want to go ahead and pull that up on here for you guys. And while we're at it, I want to go ahead and also pull up the story of Lanyer Mansion. Keep in mind, we're going to separate these two, but I also want you guys to understand our investigations that we're, that we're hosting tonight. And I want you to know the death behind them. We were actually going to wait and start the investigation at the hotel later. But for some odd reason, that spirit did not want us to wait. Absolutely. We were going to separate the two. We were going to go straight to Lanyard Mansion and do that. But we immediately got paranormal activity here from the get-go. And we were like, okay, time to grab the cameras. Time to grab the EVPs. We need to get to work. Mm-hmm. Um, so, audio technician. <laughs> Cheers to everybody. Another great paranormal investigation that we're doing tonight. We're getting a lot of work done, and um, we're glad that you guys could be here with us. Cheers to you guys. We just want to know about the blogs and paranormal <coughs> of the place. 
what people witness, paranormal phenomenon. I mean, this place is just a fucking walking and talking vortex. Yeah, definitely. What we experienced, we shouldn't have experienced it that fast. We that tried way. reviewing and retracting the EVPs earlier, guys, and I also had a camera on me around the time. But I had asked uh, something about... Um, I think it was on Fire Do you want us to stay here? Uh, what, what, what brings the person here? Or something like that about about what, what's keeping them here. Yes. Um, right. And what it said was in a very a whisper voice. It said you. It said you. And all of a sudden my hairs just started standing up. And they started said saying that they heard shit moving in the bathroom. I looked over and saw a fucking towel swaying back and forth. Then Mindy and <laughs> Mindy and Joey jumped to the other side of the bed with their fucking cameras and they're just saying don't move. We got this shit. And there were lights that, flickering and shit. After, after the whole you thing, I say about maybe five minutes later, that's when we hear the sigh. Yeah, there was a sigh. Like a sigh. We don't know if it was a sigh for us to get out. We don't know if it was a sigh that was agitated with us. We don't know what kind of sigh it was. They were just very agitated with us. Mm -hmm. I honestly think it was a sigh of agitation. I did tell the spirit to get off of me. Do not touch me unless I give them permission. I think that's what it was. I think that it was attached to you and not wanting it off of you. Exactly. You got aggravated. Exactly. Uh, you know, uh, another thing that does cross my mind, if if uh, the Denny's uh, are still kind of in this area and still coming to work and doing their thing like they used to, uh, his wife could have been the one in here. The old lady. Could have been. And that would explain that, that smell of uh, perfume. Could have been. Because I don't know any females around this time period that wears that kind of perfume. It's a question. They never mention anybody from the front. Come on, downstairs, nothing. They really? just—it said that everybody was got out, and I guess was. Well, the, where, I wonder where they were standing, where they were waiting. Yeah. People were getting out the windows. They said the firefighters had the ladders. They were escorting them down. My question: is, Where exactly were they? Were they on the roof? That hill is suicide. Yes. If you if you try to put a would, ladder up there, you're, it's going down. If you try to jump in, all you do is roll. roll exactly. I feel like there's something being hidden from us that, that we don't, we're not getting here. I feel like they're not telling us something. I feel that. I don't think anybody else escaped. I think they're saying that people escaped. But honestly, I don't think anybody escaped. I think if there's more bodies in this place, more exactly than they're not saying to us. We feel that there's more things going on here, guys, that's, that's beneath the surface that the logs just aren't telling us. No. Uh, but there's been too many paranormal encounters here with people that have been either touched or they've been they've seen and heard things. They've had some kind of uh, paranormal extravaganza happen to them, mm -hmm. um, like we have tonight. Uh, the people aren't. I mean, the, the the walls are fucking talking, guys. The walls are talking, mm -hmm. and we you know we're unfortunately we have, we're very open minded people, and we're also paranormal investigators, and that's what our job is to do Hopefully. to be able to get this. I see if you had your hat on top of a lamp, going on twice, and then next thing we know, the lamp is moving. Yeah, I had my, uh, we had the, the cap top on top of the lamp, and my hat was knocked off twice. I was on the friend with, uh, on the phone with my friend Ruby Schultz, uh, and what ended up fucking happening was I was sitting here talking to Joey, and the fucking thing had knocked my hat off. The second time we went this way, I caught it in my hand. As I caught it in my hand, the lamp shade started moving by itself. Yeah. Yeah, the spirit was shaking the lamp. I had a fascination with the lamp when I first came in. It kept trying to knock my fedora off and um, stuff like that. Mimi, did you get anything? I heard him the like the mansion and the other hotel down there. What other hotel? Did it join in? What's the story of the Broadway Tavern? Well, from what I'm listening to that, uh, the Broadway Tavern, uh, I believe it's from the 1860s, 1800s around there. And there was uh, a couple murders that happened there. And to this day, people will still hear doors slamming, lights turning on. And at some point, uh, people went up on the uh, top floors to check, see what was going on. Oh. 
There it is again. Yeah. I can see. My energy just fucking got drained from my body. I just, I'm very lightheaded. Something's here, Joey. Oh, I'm working on it, yeah. My arm. I'm trying to see if I can link this up to it. See here. I can smell perfume again coming from the bathroom. My body's just shaking. standing. Mm -hmm. Something is here. We got Mindy with my phone trying to see if we see anything. We have the phone on me right now. I'll kind of figure out what, what's going on, but all I know is my body is having severe cold chills right now. Huh. Whatever it is, it's draining a lot of my energy. Joey, light that candle. That's what I was getting ready to do. Come here. Just sit down. Take your hands and go like this. I want you to watch the flame and watch its movements. Is there anybody here with us? Please move this flame. Can you make the flame go higher? Can you raise this flame on the fire? If you're a female, can you please raise the fire on this candle I have here? Just, just please raise the fire just to let us know. Can you make the flame flicker? Can you make the flame do anything? you don't want us here, can you put this fire out? Make the candlelight go out. If you want us here, and you enjoy our company, can you make the fire flame? Can you make the flame go high for us?
you please do anything with the flame to let us know that you're here? If anybody's here with me in this room, please move the candlelight. Make it shake. Make it do anything. Raise the flame. Extinguish it. Let us know that you're here right now. Whatever was here is it's not now. <coughs> Do you see anything, Mindy? Suicide? Let us know anything? Can you move a towel or something? Let us know if, if you're murdered or killed or you should commit suicide or if you need us to help you? something had, had slapped me or something on my neck. I feel like a, a scratch mark on my neck. It, one of y'all check my neck for me. My right side of my neck is burning really, really badly. anything? It just burns so bad. It's like somebody just dug their nails in my neck and scratched the fuck out of me. guys Mandy just went out the room I guess she's checking to see if somebody's possibly next door see if she hears anything or she sees something like that come on Joey grab the key card grab the key card where is it uh, I, I don't know maybe she's got it Hold on. just stay in here for a second go ahead Ice machine. You got the key card, right?
It's a very creepy door. I wouldn't want to be in here at night. It's just floor number two. I don't like this place. Let's get the fuck out of here. Let's beat it. in that closet. Guys, the majority of, of this place burnt down in the 1960s, but there, everything burnt down by that door at the bottom. I wonder if it's in there. It just makes me wonder. The place came down. Why is there a fucking padlock on it? the article everything in here burnt down but the downstairs even the basement got damaged there's a padlock blocking it off So 
you guys earlier. Earlier when we got all the activity. I looked in here. As you see, I'm, I'm a bigger dude, so it's hard for me to fit through this fucking slope. These towels were moving back and forth profusely um, as there was movement in here. This, is, it sucks in air. It is a direct portal for this whole fucking building. If there were to be any bodies in the hilltop end or any leftover human remains, I think me and my cameraman Joey Ayola may have just found it. It's padlocked. It says private on the door. And it's very, very old. It's very, very cold in there too. Cold as a morgue. We may have just awoken the sleeping giant. The master of this place. I've never felt so much negative energy in the basement. Like that, if you want to call it the basement. I felt... I felt if we... I felt we didn't get out of there, dude. We were going to be fucking toast. Mm -hmm. Like something was going to get us or... Didn't, didn't you hear that something coming down there? But no one actually showed up. That somebody was trying to operate the elevators. We was in that room. I was instantly yelling for Ruby and asking Ruby if she was watching it. Mm -hmm. Because where we saw that black figure apparition earlier and where Ruby had saw it setting was right next to that diner we were standing in. Mm -hmm. We didn't know how to get to it, but we do now. Mm -hmm. uh, and a door, like right around the corner from it, there's like a big cold room and it says private on it. Here's the thing. I wasn't trying to go down there. For some reason, someone was something, something was like compelling you to go in there. Yeah. <laughs> Into that room that was padlocked. You, you saw me going back. Yeah, and yeah, I have it all on footage right here. I have it all on footage right here. Yeah. Ruby, uh, whenever I had you on on camera and stuff, and you were watching, did you see the padlock on the door downstairs? It said "private" on the door. Did you see that padlock on that door? It was a very old door, and it was padlocked. And me and Joey retreated quickly because I told him it was private. I didn't. I don't think any of us saw the privacy on that door. No, but, I did. But, but something just led you in there. Yes. Like something's like, hey, come come here. I need you to open that door. Like set me free. I'm here. Come, come yes. here. Come here. Something's up with this place, man. And I think we just may have found the pulpit. So whatever happened or whatever secrets there is behind that These These are businessmen, man. They, they could have had somebody murdered and put down there. Anything could have happened. Or, when that building got burnt down, they could have put the bodies there and just didn't want nobody to find it. They didn't have the kind of technology and forensics like they do today. Why put it in one room? I don't know. I think because nobody would ever go down there. I don't know what it was, what led me there. But whatever it was, there's something huge, something bad in that room. I instantly felt the urge of fear. Because as soon as I got open that door, saw that, I started tearing up. I was, I don't even know how to describe it. I, I was shivering. I felt the, the feel of fear. Like I actually started like, I, I saw Ruby was on. I, I was like yelling at Ruby. I'm like, Ruby, are you seeing this? Because I felt like if something bad was going to happen to me and you, it was going to happen right there. Yeah. I felt like something was about to fuck me and you up. And I wanted Ruby or somebody to be on here to watch it. And what, what got me confused and like baffled me is you heard it too. Was somebody or something was trying to operate that elevator? Yeah, uh, guys, I don't know if you noticed or not, but when I started freaking out, the reason I started freaking out was because something was toying with the elevator. It was almost like the staff or something in the place was going to come down and, and catch us down there. But no one came. But nobody came. It was just noise. I heard knocks down there that wasn't an ice machine. And I there also... There was no ice machine down there. There was no ice machine down there. That's also the same room that we have caught in two apparitions. I just didn't get the one on camera. Ruby uh, Schultz Mills had caught the other apparition in a picture she had circled right next to the place we were standing. 
and I felt very uneasy in there, like something was about to really hurt me or Joey. But but Joey had something was leading him, like like almost pulling him to uh, this cold cellar door. It was like a cellar. Yeah. Something was pulling him. I know we're in the basement. I know for a fact we were. Because we were not low enough. Because we saw that, remember that video I showed you? Yeah. We were still high up. Yeah. That door, there's no reason why it should be there. It should be padlocked. It should be padlocked, uh, yes, but then again, I mean, it shouldn't be padlocked because, I mean, what's in there? That's a very old part of the building, and it looks original. This is the part, that, that part of the building was the part that didn't necessarily burn all the way down. But we felt... It didn't it's a little cold. But I, I, I can honestly say that whatever was down there, it was very cold in that room. It said private, when you walked through it, it you felt very, very cold. But you just think, why would... Okay, it's private, but why would you say we have locks? That's what I'm saying. Why ain't they padlocking the private door uh, and locking it so that way nobody can go in there? Wanderers. Because whatever was pulling me in, you saw me just going straight to that door. Yeah. And then when you said no, don't, that's what I was like. And yeah. bolted it out. Yeah, because I knew that right next to it was a boiler room of some type. Mm -hmm. Had to have been a boiler room. Well, I looked through the door, I didn't see anything. It was so dark, I couldn't even tell if it was a boiler room or it was. But, but what I did saw was another hallway going straight this way. Conference rooms and stuff like that. But it didn't look like anything normal. Why would there be a conference room on the basement? Exactly. I don't know. But but maybe, like, I mean, the, the spiritual connection that we made tonight with that deity, maybe that female deity... Is was trying to lead me and you there. Something had compelled us to go down those steps and, and go 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 seek out really quickly. And I knew when Joey went, it was time for me to go too because we something was like, hey, come on, come out here, find me. And whenever like we heard, we, we felt that find me, we went to go do the find me. And do we fall in that door? Then you know, we were like, okay, snap out of it. Yeah, yeah. It was almost like a uh, compulsion, possession of some kind. Uh, of, uh, okay, come here. Almost like a spirit just kind of taking your hand and yanking you along. Exactly. Like, hey, I want you to come here. There's something in this room that you need to see, but we can't get into it. It could have been human remains. I mean, there's been stuff back in the Prohibition era where people would bury people in the walls, in brick walls. They would actually put the bodies in there, and they would stack bricks on top of bricks, and the body would never be found. It was a way of hiding stuff. Hey, Linda. When you read those articles, did it mention anything about the whole time in the basement? Mm -hmm. I was referring to it. I never read it, so you're supposed to be looking at it. Because I didn't know you were reading it and didn't say nothing about the basement. Yeah. I wonder if when they restored it, that the only thing that was left was just that part right there, and they rebuilt it from that up. Alright, I think that, um... I think that what I'm about to do is I'm about to end this video here, this live stream, and I think that before we even go to the Lanyard Mansion, that we're just going to go outside and just kick it straight to the chase. We're going to go out there and we're going to do our investigation. We're going to start getting pictures right now. Let's do it. Get the camera ready, dispose and get replace the batteries. I'm going to go ahead and end the stream, uh, and I'm going to go ahead and get it ready to go back out again. This is Death Bat Paranormal. This is the Hilltop Inn. We're getting insane activity tonight. You see that? Can you conference call me? She's off. Awesome. Ruby, what are you trying to say? What do you mean she saw something? Ruby, she just said yes, I don't know what she responded to, but... We need a conference call. It's ending a conference call. She might have saw something. She, she, could have, she could have saw something. Yeah. Because you, you, you were like taking over, dude. Something was fucking... I, you I, I saw me not, running. I could not get your attention. No. Something had you, you dude. Joey, 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 stop. Joey, stop. And something stop. had you, dude. We need to call her. She still probably saw something attached to me or something. Because I've never felt that way. All right. Life. I'm going to go ahead and end this call. I will give you a conference call uh, in, in private with just us and the team um, right away. Um, I'm kind of shaking right now, dude. No, I'm, I'm fucking shaking. Okay, um, I don't know what was in that cellar door, but there was definitely something there, guys. It's padlocked. We can't get in it. 
Uh, but I guarantee you, uh, if we could, we, we, we would. Um, we don't know. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and end this call. This is Death Bat Paranormal, Paul Isaiah Bishop. Uh, I'm lead investigator, uh, and this is lead investigator and uh, cameraman Joey Ayola. Uh, my girlfriend, Mindy Jackson, um, she's looking up some of the history on the laptop. Um, and this is the Hilltop Inn Hotel, Madison, Indiana. And we have insane activity going on tonight. I'm going to go ahead and end this call. I'm going to go ahead and do a conference with one of our friends. And uh, She saw something. She just said she saw something. Oh, crap. Um, I'm going to go ahead and end this call, guys, and we're going to go ahead and get a hold of one of our friends uh, because uh, they seen something, and it seems pretty important. Uh, we're, our team is very, very exhausted right now uh, because of what just happened. Uh, the spirits had used all of Joey's energy to drain him. Uh, I was insolent yeah, yelling. I was so life. scared That's that I was yelling life. for my friend Ruby on the fucking call because I thought something was about to kill me or Joey. I honestly thought that could have been I the know, end. I like this person would had me on a mission. They when they were trying to show him something. When you finally opened that door and said, let's go, I, like, I snapped out of it. Yeah, it was time. There were cameras watching. I know the staff have. Uh, the, the lady at the reception desk upstairs... Or uh, downstairs, I think. Uh, she's on floor number one. Mm -hmm. uh, I know she has cameras in front of her to watch all the hallways, and there's cameras everywhere. So I knew cameras was on us, and we was being watched by them. But this was a paranormal something watching us. Something is not right. No. And I got a feeling we're on to something, and we're going to find something big tonight. Let's go out to Ruby and see what she's got to say. Let's get to Ruby, and let's figure out what she saw. Um, this is Death Pet Paranormal. Paul Isaiah Bishop, Joey Ayola, and Mindy Jackson. And uh, we're coming to you guys live. We'll touch base with you guys here shortly. shortly. Over and out. Peace. Remember, keep an open mind.